All right, so it's finally time to center the servo by powering it up and then get the servo arms put to a 90 degree. Uh, so uh, looking at the frame of the helicopter, you know, this is the forward, the battery tray. We're gonna end up with two servos that are uh, like this that will go into the front and mount that way. And they will mount with the servo arms going, pointing, you know, in the upwards direction. Uh, and I'm not mounting them, I'm just going to get them set at 90 because I'm going to install the motor before I mount them. The third servo is going to go, again, uh, the gear up and it's going to mount right there. And uh, that will be for the, uh, for the elevator. So you have basically um, an elevator servo and then the pitch and aileron um, right here. So what we want to do first is get these things uh, centered. Uh, and we do that by giving them power. Because right now, as I mentioned before, if you put a servo arm on this, and, uh, and turn it, it will go wherever you tell it to go. So what we need to do is apply some power so that it will go to center. Um, and I'm gonna randomly put some of these on here just so we can kind of see that uh, happen. So what I'm gonna do is on the Robird unit, um, I've got uh, conveniently some room for uh, servo left, servo center, and servo right. Servo center is going to be the elevator. That's gonna be the rear one. So that's an easy one to figure out. I'm gonna plug that in, servo center. Let's see if I can get it in there. And uh, just like um, I discussed before, but I'll re-review this with you, uh, brown is equ equates to the negative channel, red is ho uh, hot, positive, and then the, the orange is the control channel. So it's gonna go in the same direction uh, as black, red, ye uh, white will go brown, red, yellow. So I'll show you all these once I get them connected. Uh, so then I'm gonna pick one. Um, I'm not sure which one I wanna do. It doesn't really matter, uh, right or left. Um, you know, I'm just gonna like plug one in each side and then figure out which one's which. One's which. So uh, I'm gonna make the, uh, the right one. And right is, right is from, the, from the rear of the helicopter. So if you're looking, this is the front of the helicopter going that direction. Right is gonna be this side. Um, and left is gonna be this side. So if, you're, if you have it facing you, it's gonna be the opposite, which is kind of confusing because you're, you're, you're installing them this direction, but you're thinking about them from this direction. Um, so uh, right, I'm gonna make uh, this guy. Servo right, get it flipped over. Okay, and then uh, servo left, I'm gonna make this other guy. Okay, now looking at these, I, I don't have my uh, my tail went in yet, but I will soon. Um, just, I won't worry about that right now. Um, looking at these, I have all um, orange or white on top and all black or brown on the bottom. Okay, so that's how that's gonna go. Now that that is there, I gotta try and uh, this mess of wires untangled here now that I just picked it up, okay. So there are my servos. And uh, now I'm going to uh, apply power to the ESC by plugging in the battery, which is going to power on the gyro, uh, which is going to power on the servos, and you should see them snap to uh, what it believes for them to be a center position. Okay. 
So they are centered up. And uh, now what I gotta do is figure out how to get them uh, set to 90. So it's important, number one, to figure out which direction they're gonna go. That'll be helpful, right? Um, so let's start with the, the one I have designated um, as the center, which is this one here. Now this one here, remember, is gonna go in that way in the helicopter. So I've got that pointed in the right direction. And I'm just gonna see if I can get this servo arm put at a 90. And that one doesn't wanna go 90 very well. Um, so I'm gonna pull a servo arm off of another one because they, uh, they're all a little bit different. That's not too bad. Where's that other servo arm? I only have three arms. If you have a whole bunch of arms, you'll find uh, it's probably easier. Uh, none of them are real great. Let's try going the other direction. Maybe I can use this for something else. Just because I plugged it into that channel doesn't mean that's where it needs to get stuck. That's, uh, that's not too bad. Ooh, that's pretty good right there. Um, so that's actually backwards for what I want for a center channel. So I may use this for, uh, would go that way, that would be my right channel. So I'm going to unplug, because I don't like messing around with plugging and unplugging without power. So I'll unplug the battery and switch the right and the center channel. Plug back in the battery. There we go. Now they're powered up nicely. Okay, so this one is now going to be my, let me make sure I'm looking at this right, my right channel. Okay, so this one I have set for center, in which case I need to think about getting a 90 degree going this way. And that's pretty darn close right there. I'm just gonna leave that, I think that's perfect. Let's see if this one, um, so if I have a right, then I have a left. I've gotta get 90 degree. Unfortunately, that's about as close as that's gonna get. So I'm gonna have to do some adjustments on that one. Uh, but that's okay, we can do that, that's not a problem. So these are my three servos and how they're set. And, uh, and then next what I'll do is I'll use the Robird software to center them. Alrighty, so I am uh, connected. I have my transmitter on. I have the Robird uh, powered on through the ESC, uh, through the, you know, with the, the battery. And then I'm plugged into the USB. And right, I'm actually here on the collective pitch screen. If I go back to the receiver screen, I can see uh, the changes uh, when I move the sticks, okay? That's that's good thing, that's what I wanna see. That means it is uh, taking control. It's not passing that information over to the, uh, the servos, which I thought was interesting. It kinda confused me at first because I wasn't sure if I was doing things correctly, but now I realize uh, that it's kind of manipulating, it's taking control from the servos. So what I wanna do um, in this screen is get that set to zero, that pitch, and then from here is where I can actually set my 90 degree um, uh, settings to, uh, for each servo. So you can see here left neutral, center neutral, and right neutral. So as I move this, I'm gonna move this, uh, start with this guy, because he's probably uh, the most important to get set up. He's the furthest off, and I guess they're all guys because I keep calling him he. Um, so I'm just going to set this uh, up against here as a point of reference, uh, set it up flat against there. So it's kind of easy to see um, how off it really is. And then as on the screen here, I adjust that sub trim.
it begins to move the arm. Now that's set at minus 50 and uh, what the computer is telling me, what the program is telling me is that hey, adjust that left servo arm. All right, this is a matter of, you know, trying to get it close mechanically before you can uh, you do it uh, with software. So I'm just going to try the next rung up. Let me put that back to center. Let's try going down or up positive. That might be getting us close. No more. So definitely uh, it's better in this particular case to go one direction than the other, uh, even though at first glance it didn't appear that it was going to work out that way. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to eyeball down. Um, I'm looking at this line. Uh, let me get you so you can see. I'm looking at this line, the hash mark for the one, and I'm basically just looking through the holes. There's three holes on the server horn, and I'm checking to see how lined up uh, they all are on that one line. I can see the first two after that, uh, you know, there's not much there. I think I may want to back it off just a touch. Let's try 24. I think that looks pretty good. Um, that looks pretty good as a 90. So that one's done. Let's just double check this one here. I'll just find a new spot here. Same thing. I'm just going to look down. That one can go positive just a touch and I'm following the wire. This is the right channel. So let me go right and I want to go positive. Or no, I think I want to go negative. Nope. Let's see where we're at there. A little bit more. That's too far. You can hear these guys chattering a little bit as they refine center. That looks pretty darn good there. Now because that's my left and right channel, I should be able to line them up straight and then have those holes fairly well lined up. This one still looks like it's a little bit a little bit high to me, my eye anyway. I'm gonna double check it. Yeah, I'm gonna adjust it just a touch more. Give it a positive. I end up going to the max here. That looks pretty good there. Um, I think that's good enough for me. Let me double check this center one now, just to make sure. I think the center one is dead on.
I think so. All right, so there's my three uh, set to 90. Uh, and you can see the settings that I've made in the, uh, the Robert software. It's all done software base. Um, I'm gonna hit save because there's a save button there. I don't know if it does anything or not. The manual actually doesn't talk about it, but what, what it does say is in order to, uh, to commit these changes is to uh, go to the welcome screen. So I'm gonna show you the, uh, the actual unit here so you can see what happens when I go to welcome. Looks to me like it updated the firmware. The servos stopped chattering for a few seconds and then uh, now they're back to being uh, chattery again. Okay, so now that these are set to 90s, uh, what I need to do is uh, a couple things. Number one is I wanna mark them to identify what channel I have them set for. So I'm gonna identify them with a, uh, a marker uh, just on the side of this uh, black electrical tape. I will mark them as center, uh, left, and right. That way I know where I'm gonna put them on the helicopter and where they're gonna plug into the rowbird. That way there's no question later on. The other thing I need to do is uh, screw down uh, these uh, servo arms. Now that I have them in place before they, they uh, come off, I need a Loctite, these are metal gears. Loctite, use the uh, silver uh, threaded screws uh, to go inside here and, and uh, tighten those down. The other thing I need to do is install my servo arm balls. Um, and so I'll be doing that. And uh, I think that's it. I'm not gonna go through that with you. Uh, I will review the manual to find out. My assumption is the servo uh, arm ball is going to go on the very end uh, of these. Um, I think they go on the last one. I don't remember. I don't have the manual in front of me right now. Uh, but either way, I'm gonna review that to make sure I get them in the right place. And, uh, and then that's it. Uh, next steps, we'll be uh, working on this guy. We'll be putting the main gear in, uh, use the main shaft, obviously uh, we'll go in with that. Um, and then I'm gonna put in the motor. And then once I get the motor in, uh, it's gonna be the two servos in front and the one uh, in the rear. So stand by, that's gonna be coming up next. And I'll definitely be uh, doing that along with you so you get to see that process. Uh, but I'm going to end this video. I think we've covered a lot of ground here uh, from, you know, binding uh, transmitters uh, and receiver together, setting up transmitters, setting up the, uh, the Rober G31, uh, you know, getting the, uh, the servo set at, at 90. So we covered so much ground. I think it's about time we call it. And uh, the next video, we'll, uh, we'll start putting all this stuff back uh, onto the helicopter. So thanks for watching and uh, appreciate it. Catch you on the next one.